First thing I'd like to say is Las Vegas, the Super Bowl is coming. Liar! Breaking news into the CBS 13 newsroom. The Raiders have fired head coach Josh McDaniels. The Raiders have fired head coach Josh McDaniels. Very few times are um, decisions made in the middle of the night in Las Vegas that are rational. And that is the firing of Josh McDaniels. Unfortunately for Josh McDaniels, this is his second time he has been relieved of his duties as a head coach. This feels like deja vu. Tell me it's that deja vu. Josh McDaniels has been fired after less than two years. He got his second chance as an NFL head coach with the Raiders and he failed again. The Raiders fired both Josh McDaniels and general manager Dave Ziegler and both were hired from the Patriots ahead of the 2022 season. Funny enough though, they were both actually with the Broncos in 2010. It feels like for a while now, teams have taken a shot on coaches that have been involved in the Patriots organization in one way or another. And frankly, it hasn't really worked out that well. Just just because the Patriots had a ton of success doesn't mean it carries over to other head coaches. For instance, there have been 10 former Bill Belichick assistants, and only one of them is still a head coach, Brian Dable. Only two of them had winning records. Bill O'Brien went 52-48 and as the Texans head coach from 2014 to 2020. And then there's Al Groh, who went 9-7 and as the Jets head coach, but resigned after just one year to be the head coach at Virginia. Out Outside of that blip of success, the Bill Belichick assistants have been complete failures. But it really does feel like Josh McDaniels may be the poster child for all of that. Hilariously, I mean, not really for me as a Patriots fan, but somehow he finished 3-0 against Bill Belichick as a head coach. I still have no clue how that happened. Funny enough, McDaniels actually lasted less time in Las Vegas than he did in Denver somehow. The Raiders just couldn't hold on to leads or close out games, and he really burned the team to the ground. When he got to Vegas, he inherited Derek Carr and made a splash by trading for Devontae Adams and signing Chandler Jones. Things looked up for the organization. Josh McDaniels came in and it looked like they were building a winning roster. Nope, that didn't happen. Since then, Carr got released after the season. Jones got released and is now clinically insane. Wait, they don't know what happened with Aaron Hernandez and Josh McDaniels. Y'all thought my Chico killed himself in jail? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <gasps> and it sounds like Devontae Adams doesn't even want to be in Vegas anymore. And can you blame him? The Raiders went 6-11 in 2022 and then ended up signing Jimmy Garoppolo in the offseason, and it's not working. They started off 3-5, and five, and they were 3-3 three and three in coming off the back-to-back -back wins with a win over the Patriots, but then Las Vegas lost to the Bears 30-12 and just lost to the Lions 26-14 on Monday Night Football. And that really seemed to be the last straw. Now, there's no doubt that McDaniels is a terrible, terrible head coach coach, but as a coordinator, he really was fantastic. And sometimes that's just the case. You can be a really, really good coordinator, but not that good of a head coach. And I just think that's what McDaniel's situation is. He got his first shot to be a head coach back in 2009 as the Broncos head coach, and he immediately made changes once he got there. He came in and the Broncos traded away Jay Cutler to the Bears in a trade that fetched Kyle Orton in a first. Now, McDaniels did have Tim Tebow as a rookie, but he he wasn't there for his Tebow mania crazy season. He was already gone by that point. Now, to be fair, McDaniels wasn't too awful in year one with the Broncos. They did go 500 going eight and eight, but the next season wasn't as friendly to him. They started the 2010 season three and nine, and he got the boot after a loss to the Chiefs early in December. Josh McDaniels is 0 for two as a head coach, and it's really hard to see him getting another shot as a head coach, at least not for the next 15 years or so. So it really feels like it's over for him, but he should no doubt be in high demand as an offensive coordinator. He had so much success as a coordinator. Now, yes, he was with Brady for a lot of that, but hey, he did have success as a coordinator even in 2021 with Mac Jones. But speaking of offensive coordinators, the Raiders are now in need of one because they went on to fire their offensive coordinator, Mike Lombardi. And I'll give you a guess of what team he was with before the Raiders. Yep, he was with the Patriots because the Raiders literally were just the Las Vegas Patriots. Now it'll be Bo Hardegree who's going to be calling the plays after being the coordinator 
quarterbacks coach. Then Antonio Pierce is taking over as the interim head coach. And this is a sad statistic, but he'll be the eighth head coach in charge of the Raiders since Mark Davis took over. A little history behind Pierce. He was the defensive coordinator at Arizona State and ended up leaving after recruiting violations during COVID. He then landed in Las Vegas and now will coach his first game on Sunday against the Giants, who he made a Pro Bowl with in 2006 and won a Super Bowl with in 2007. And to be honest with you guys, I have zero clue what to expect from him. But if the Raiders are suddenly better than they were with McDaniels, maybe Davis should actually consider hiring the interim this time around. Because Rich Masaccia was great when he took over as the interim and still didn't get the gig. Hate to say it, but maybe the Raiders would have been better off with him at the helm. Now he's in Green Bay as an assistant head coach and special teams coordinator, but the Raiders are suddenly in need of a GM, head coach, and probably quarterback because I don't really think Aiden O'Connell was a long-term solution there, but this team really has crashed and burned. I really do think Las Vegas needs to step back and figure out a quarterback plan, and that'll probably come at the draft. If the season were to end today, they would have the eighth overall pick, which would essentially knock them out of the race for, you know, a Caleb Williams or Drake May, but they should absolutely consider drafting a tier two quarterback, or at least someone later in the draft that might be more of a long shot. Regardless though, the Raiders rebuild needs to start now. You need to get Devontae Adams out of Las Vegas because he doesn't deserve this. He came to play with his brother. He came to play with Derek Carr, a guy who he played with in college and had so much success with. And even last year, like it's not like the Raiders were great, but he had so much more production than he's had this year with Jimmy Garoppolo. I just don't know why you give a player like that so much money just to trade the quarterback that he literally came there to play with away. It just made zero sense to me. And I get Derek Carr wasn't perfect, but honestly, Derek Derek Carr probably gives this team more wins now than Jimmy Garoppolo has. But more than anything, you really need to find a new head coach, somebody that can build a staff and inspire a team to actually go out there and play well week in and week out. And then you gotta get a GM that can actually build a team. But frankly, with Derek Carr, I don't really think the problem was that the Raiders didn't have a good enough roster. I felt like it was more of a coaching thing more than anything. But now it's time to figure out the quarterback situation and start over. It's that time of year and the first head coach domino this season has finally fallen. And now the question is, who's next? Because it really does feel like Matt Eberflus and Ron Rivera are two coaches that are kind of sitting in a pretty hot seat. Don't really know what happens there, but I'm sure there are plenty head coaches that aren't gonna survive the offseason, probably like a Brandon Staley. Now I get it, head coaching is a hard job. It's not easy to build a team from the ground up. It's not easy to assemble a staff that's actually going to make a team good. But if you're not good, you're not good. You don't deserve to keep the job. Just because you're a good coordinator doesn't mean you're gonna be good at leading a franchise. And frankly, Josh McDaniels has proved that twice now. He's done. 